Folks, it couldn't happen to Kentucky again. Bar none, it just couldn't. It did. Oakland upsets the Wildcats 80 to 76. Eric Crawford, Tyler Griever here in Pittsburgh. Eric, sometimes you can just watch a game and sense what is about to happen. And the way Oakland attacked Kentucky and maybe how timid Kentucky was in response kind of gave you the impression that this could happen, and it did. Well, Kentucky looked confused for a lot of the game, and they looked tentative against a zone of a kind they had not seen. It's kind of a hybrid zone because it doesn't react the way a normal 2-3 zone always does, but whatever it was, they weren't ready for it. They weren't sure where their shots were coming from. They were driving and not seeing the things that they expected to see, and that put them on their heels, combined with a fantastic Oakland game plan where yeah. they were not going to run. They were going to keep being deliberate and being deliberate, and then, you know, Jack Goki just a, just a uh, lights out, uh, you know, no conscience, firing three-pointers, looking for them, uh, jumping sideways, whichever way you could shoot them. <laughs> it was a fantastic, historic NCAA tournament performance. And, you know, you could put Oakland there with, with whoever you want, with St. Peter's and Gardner-Webb and any painful yep. upset, Middle Tennessee way back in the day that you want to put with it as a Kentucky fan. But I think this one is worse worse for John Calipari, worse for the program and where it is right now. For perspective, Jack Golke set the record for most threes made against Kentucky in NCAA tournament game yeah. in yeah. the first yeah. half. Yeah. Like, yeah, he had already did that. And this guy, it reminded me of Steph Curry. And yeah. It really did, and what he did with Davidson. But back on the UK side of things, Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham did not have the games they needed to pull this game off. Reed kind of got it going a little bit in the second half, but it was too little, too late. I was really surprised at, at how timid they were in attacking that zone. Maybe not timid, but indecisive. I, yeah. I think that's what got me. It was they just couldn't, oh, should I shoot this? Should I pass mm -hmm. this? And when you do that on this stage, mm -hmm. you're done. You're yeah, done. Well, and Oakland came in fully confident, knew what it wanted to do, and executed it. Yeah, Kentucky's freshmen did not play well. Uh, the only two double-digit scores Kentucky had were fifth-year seniors. Uh, Antonio Reeves atoned for his tough performance last year in the yep. game they went out on. He was fantastic at 27 points, uh, was, was meeting the moment. Yep. Uh, Trey Mitchell was good. He fouled out. But... They really just didn't have anybody else. The big men could weren't effective. Uh, they, they, they gave up offensive rebounds. Oakland just knew what they wanted, and they knew who they were, and they played to it. And then they rose up a little bit above who they were to get the upset. Uh, Greg Campy said with six minutes left, we figured if we had the lead, we were going to win. That's what we do. And Kentucky fans knew with six minutes left and Oakland with the lead, that's what was going to happen. And that creates the questions for John Calipari. And of all the things that happened in this game, to me the key figure in this game was John Calipari, what this means for him at Kentucky, what it means for his future, and where we go from here with him. Yeah, because, look, make no mistake, Kentucky has not made it out of the first weekend now since 2019. And this is a program that defines itself by Final Fours and national championships and, and calls itself the gold standard of college basketball. And Eric, they're not even a bronze standard right now or a silver. I'm not trying to be harsh here, but that's how we got to call it at this point when you've lost to St. Peter's, you've lost to Oakland, and you have lottery picks on this roster. This team was extremely talented, extremely yeah. talented. And the fact that they couldn't even get past the first game to me is – I can't say shocking because we watched them play this year and you saw how up and down it could be, how Jekyll and Hyde. But I at least thought even if they played a bad game here, they would still be able to win because they had that much talent on this roster. Yeah, they did. Um, and, you know, the problem is Calipari's always been able to, to pivot from losses like this and sell the great recruiting class yep. that he had coming in. But yep. right now, you know, Kentucky fans are looking at the talent on this team. If you can't win with this – how are you going to win with the talent next yeah. year? And yeah. then, you know, I thought Jay Wright made a great point in the post-game coverage on CBS. He said, look, gathering up all these young players and trying to win with them against older, more mature players, that's over. Yeah. You're not going to be able to do that. And that could be a problem for Calipari. And my, my thing is this. It's not just as you're losing the tournament. That's one thing. Right. You're losing an opening round games to Oakland and St. Peter's and teams with nowhere near your talent. That, that can't keep happening. No. And if I'm John Calipari, you know, I'm looking back at Kentucky basketball history and, and looking back at Tubby Smith. Tubby Smith made a decision that 
I'm not winning enough to satisfy the fans. If I leave now, they're going to remember me fondly. If I stay too long, they might not. I think I don't expect John Calipari is going to leave. He's got a lifetime contract. Yeah, they're not going right. to fire him. Thirty-three million dollars or something. So uh, I, I do think at some point, if he can get another good season, that might be it. He might he might want to go out on that note and and just wrap it up there. But right now. I said it's a good thing he's in his hometown. Maybe he could find some family to bunk with what, until the heat's off in Lexington a little bit. Yeah. But it might not be off for a while. No, and I can't blame Kentucky fans for that. I know at times we have fun talking about the fervor of the fan base and how crazy it can get. But, you know, Rob Dillingham in the locker room afterwards I actually thought was very good at taking accountability. And, and keep in mind, a freshman who's only played for the program for one year sitting there and saying, like, look, we, we have to own this that we – did not deliver and that the fans were invested in this and we could not deliver for them. And that speaks a lot to what the UK program is and what the expectations are and these kids know that. But bottom line, it, it just can't be like this yeah. for well, Kentucky. It, it just, can't. It's it tough. Can't. Uh, you know, and it, just people are tired of hearing about, you know, and it's great that all of these players are getting drafted. Sure, it's of great course. that they're yeah. they've signed billions of dollars worth of contracts with a B. Yeah, we but heard that this week. You had yeah. almost ten thousand Kentucky fans, you know, make a sacrificial spending to come up here yeah, to do hours, this yeah. and they're not making billions of dollars. Yeah. Um and, and so it, it's a serious thing. I I've said the state of Kentucky, March Madness is a statewide holiday. They roll the TVs into the classrooms yeah. if it's a day yeah. game. It's a it's a great thing, but it's not the same when the teams are not even they don't have to be winning a championship they don't have to go to every final four but they need to be giving people hope and louisville hasn't had hope for a while now kentucky is down on hope and that's that's not gonna they're not gonna stay with that very long it feels like there's just not a lot as you said earlier there, there's not a sell for yeah. this there, there's yeah. not much to build off of mm -hmm. moving forward to convince people mm -hmm. how many more tweaks you got how many more whatever and that's what has to I think trouble John Calipari yeah. right now and his coaching staff and really even Mitch Barnhart for, as you said, it it's not so simple as just to move on. That's that's a boatload of money yeah. to try and move yeah. on from. But here we stand at an empty court in Pittsburgh talking about another mm -hmm. UK tournament yep. loss and who knows what comes after it. Yep. But we had a good time here in Pittsburgh. As much as, a brief time. A very brief time, much briefer than, than we anticipated. But we appreciate you guys keeping up with the coverage. We'll get back on home to Louisville for everything else. He's Eric Crawford. I'm Tyler Griever for WDRB Sports.